Hi, my name is Hannah. I am an artist, homesteader, filmmaker, and lover of fungi. Together with my husband Chad, we live in our 24-foot ice castle fish house in Minnesota, northern USA. And we are cultivators of a wild simulated mushroom farm. Two years ago, we sold our house and moved off-grid for a year. Our experience being on none other than my sister, Sarah of the North's land. If you don't know her channel, here is a link. During that first year of off-grid life, we brainstormed on practical ways we could financially support our simple lifestyle at the same time as doing something that we are truly passionate about. One of the many projects we started was a mushroom farm, which is one of our biggest patches. With our unfolding dream of cultivating our own off-grid mushroom farm and not knowing if we could provide enough essentials through an inside lab or grow room, and all of the resources that would take to create that, we decided to be as wild simulated as possible, at least for now, allowing nature to provide most of the essentials like substrate, light, air exchange, and humidity. The basics needed for growing most types of fungi. This same concept was applied to creating this channel and is awarded for allowing nature to provide most of the essentials like giving us the name Wild Cultivators. A year ago, we moved back to the area we started our relationship and got married in. We brought our mushroom farm with us. I did make a video about that. Here's the link in case you haven't seen it. Within this last year, we have had to focus on how to incorporate our new and improved lifestyle into our old and familiar setting. The temptations to retreat back into the known and familiar way of living a trapped life and making choices on how to cope with feeling trapped is a great challenge to behold. That trapped lifestyle is what brought us to our physical breaking point back in 2021. With the huge lifestyle challenges that we have been facing in the last year, we have also been living 
on a different property than our mushroom logs, making it inconvenient to visit the farm, as well as the move slightly scrambling the fruiting cycle of our logs, creating a sparse production for the last year. We hid from people and doing things, and we kept the focus on us, being sure to retain the experience we had from living off grid and making sure we were working it into our daily lifestyle. It is something we find extremely important and highest on our priority list because changing our lifestyle is what brought us the health to be able to do what we are doing today. This spring, the focus again can be turned towards our mushroom farm. First time coming to see the logs this year. There's some life around. Need some water? Lean twos for the aspen, oysters, and maybe a shade cloth. And we are in bees' nest. We recently had our last frost, and with the warmer nights and even warmer days, the mushrooms will be popping. One of the things we have to help provide for our logs is water. The way we lean them up with their end on the ground does allow them to soak moisture from the land, but the land does not always provide enough water to create the amount of mushrooms we want. Not to mention, Minnesota has been in a drought for the past few years now. For now, besides the blessed rain, our only option of getting water to the farm is to carry it ourselves. How convenient that we live an off-grid lifestyle and already have quite a few five-gallon water jugs. Our farm is on a hill. I I'm a firm believer that your lifestyle should keep you healthy and fit. If you struggle to have either of those, it usually takes a lifestyle change to heal you. I'm so thankful that my lifestyle has kept me fit enough that when faced with a challenge like this, I am capable of putting my mind and my body to hard work to make it happen. I have been soaking our shiitake logs. I am also setting up our oyster and lion's mane logs that we inoculated ourselves last spring. This will be the first year they produce mushrooms. Our farm is a little bit away from a natural spring and even further away from a well water source.
last year we really didn't do much with our farm. Um, we didn't really have the means to, have the time to, or many opportunities to. We have a little better handle of it this year. So I have been coming to the mushroom farm every day for almost two weeks now soaking the logs because they got pretty dried out last year. Um, some of the logs are actually already pinning. The reward of not only getting stronger, but the dopamine kick of actually seeing mushrooms pop up is exactly what I need in my life. We have mushrooms. That's a mushroom. And that's a mushroom. That's a mushroom. I've been working on clearing away last year's leaves as I know they harbor loads of bugs and slugs and snails and I want to keep them as far away from my yummy mushrooms as possible. We've got loads of mushrooms coming and hopefully today I think I'm going to fit all of the logs in and that will mean that all of our logs have gotten soaked this spring. I love having a mushroom farm. Let's get to work.
During the last three to four weeks, I have been going to the mushroom farm just about once a day, a few days, even twice, with just a few days off. The daily forest bathing, the daily exercise and fresh air, sunshine, and the new growth in the woods to observe and benefit from, I can't help but be extremely, extremely thankful for my hardworking husband. Even though he is the one who got me into mushrooms, and it has been his dream to have a mushroom farm, he spends the majority of his time as a mechanic because he too is taking major steps towards the dreams that we have together.